In this video, I'm going to talk about febrile seizure. The definition of febrile seizure is seizures occurring in association with fever, most commonly seen in children who are 6 months to 6 years old, with no evidence of any intracranial pathology or metabolic derangement. By intracranial pathology, it might mean infection causing the fever, for example meningitis or encephalitis, and by metabolic derangement might mean that there's some electrolyte imbalance causing um, the seizure. So to diagnose as febrile seizure, there should be no evidence of these two things. For classification of febrile seizure, we can classify them into simple or complex febrile seizure. So here are some of the um, criteria for simple febrile seizure. The duration must be less than 15 minutes and it is generalized seizure and there is no recurrence during the febrile episode. Whereas for complex febrile seizure, if the seizure duration is more than 15 minutes, if there are focal features or there, during the febrile episode there is more than one seizure, which means there is recurrence. And if there is residual neurological deficit post-ictally, especially um, for example, thoughts paralysis. So any one of the criteria is enough to diagnose as complex febrile seizure. For investigation, we can do full blood count, blood sugar and urinalysis to rule out um, urinary tract infection that might cause fever. And blood sugar is for, to rule out hypoglycemia that might cause seizure as well. Full blood count is to look at the white cell count level to rule out any infection. And we can also do lumbar puncture. Lumbar puncture must be done if there is any sign and symptoms which are suggestive of intracranial infection. In fact, it should be done uh, quickly to uh, rule out meningitis or encephalitis. And it should be done if there is persistent lethargy, which means uh, reduced activity in the infant, and if they are not fully interactive. We can also do blood culture for investigation. For management, um, it is mainly the supportive measures for febrile seizure, and we should also control the fever by avoiding excessive clothing on the child and we can also give antipyretic for example syrup or rectal paracetamol this is for the patient's comfort and this does not reduce the recurrence of seizure and we can also give rectal diazepam if the seizures last more than five minutes so these are some of the risk factors for recurrent febrile seizures so there are four risk factors, which are family history of febrile seizure, the age of the child is less than 18 months, low degree of fever, which is less than 40 degrees during the first episode of febrile seizure, and the brief duration, which is less than one hour between the onset of fever and onset of the seizure. Which means after the fever occur, after the fever starts, the seizure happens within less than one hour. So based on these four risk factors, we can determine the risk of recurrence. If there is none of these risk factors, then the risk of recurrence is less than 15%. If there is two or more risk factors, then the risk of recurrence is more than 30%. Whereas if there is three or more risk factors out of these four, then the risk of risk recurrence is more than 60%, which is a very high risk of recurrent febrile seizure. So for risk factors of for subsequent epilepsy, there is a neurodevelopmental abnormality, or if the febrile seizure is complex form, or there is family history of epilepsy. So for the prognosis of febrile seizure, there is usually, um, according to studies done, there is 30% risk of recurrence after the first attack of febrile seizure. And if there is a, um, there are two episodes, after the second attack, the recurrence is 48% possibility. And 2 to 
of children will develop subsequent afebrile seizure, which means seizure without fever, or develop epilepsy. And usually after febrile seizures, there is no evidence of any permanent neurological deficits. So that's all for my video. Thank you.